All right, Hafidi guys, and welcome to another episode of the One Mike Indonesia podcast. Uh, of course, I'm your host, Victorious, and hope everything is well. And today, uh, we got a very, very awesome, special uh, uh, guest with us. And of course, all the way from the mainland, all the way out in Michigan, Angela Edwards, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you. It. Thank you for, re- for, for you know, uh, replying to me so fast because I was like, oh, she might not get this in time. <laughs> For this week's podcast, but you you definitely um, sent the message back in time. So thank you so much for agreeing and especially for your time. I know with the time difference, it's it's going to be kind of hard, but we kind of made it work. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so Angela. Well, before we get into uh, our big topic of the day, uh, let's get to know you first. Um, uh, tell the people, uh, you know, where you're from, um, what island you represent, and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm Angela Edward. I am a Micronesian American daughter, sister, auntie. Um, I currently live in the state of Michigan over here in the mainland in the United States. Um, My mother is American, so I'm biracial. And my father came from the Federated States of Micronesia from Ponte um, in the late 70s for school. And he's been here ever since. Wow. Wow. And uh, have you uh, have you ever got a chance to um, go to Pompeii uh, since then, or? Yeah, so my my dad and I just visited. I mean, not just. I mean, I'm showing my age, so it feels <laughs> like it was it just happened, but it did not. It was um, a little over five years ago we visited. So um, I'm ready to go back again. <laughs> right, it's it's time. You know, when you live abroad, uh, there are these times that you kind of miss. You just want to just take off and just be in the islands for a bit. I know COVID has really restricted our ability to see our family and it's tough, but it's, it's good. It's for our safety. So I'm okay with that. That's awesome. Um, so we're going to get into it um, with, with this whole, and everybody knows, everybody's seen it on Instagram, on social media, the, the, the Netflix big show show, um, you know, well, I don't know what to call it to label it, but it, it just, it really affected a lot of people. Um, so uh, we saw this, the, the clip went out, uh, it's a little history on that. Uh, was like weeks and weeks ago, uh, a picture came out. We all saw the picture of Big Show and the family sitting around the couch uh, with the, the four stars, the Micronesia shirts. And, and then everybody got excited because I got excited too. I'm like, whoa, what's happening? Like, yo, let's, let's do this, fam. Like, I'm ready. You know? And yeah, then definitely. a lot of people were sharing it. People were like, wow, thank you so much for, you know, we can't wait. We thank you for, you know, the, the representation. Thank you for supporting stuff like that and then just yesterday we were like what are we watching so let's take your take on that and i'll we'll play the clip if we'll see uh but what's your take on that when you first saw the clip uh, i'm kind of like you i feel like we all hyped them up <laughs> we were <laughs> excited i'm one of the many humans who <laughs> decided to share it i um i didn't put it on my own page but i had shared it onto my brother's page because like a lot of Pacific Islanders, like growing up, our family was huge into wrestling and what used to be WWF and eventually became WWE. And that was, that was a common thing in our family. Like my brother had all the figures just like lined up. So, so not only was it like exciting to get representation, but it was from a wrestler and we were all stoked. And then when the episode came out and we saw that it was uh, a very lackluster <laughs> representation of of who we are and what our country is it was i mean it was disappointing to say say the very least what do you think should have been done though in the beginning like do you think uh the writers like who's to blame like if if we're to throw out blaming right now like who do you think should be blamed for this that's really tricky um i mean obviously the writers i'm disappointed in them um i put out a video on um you on not youtube oh my goodness on Instagram, which I think is how you had kind of gotten to me, but I think I really just want everybody who was involved in this to take ownership of the fact that they had a part of this, because I think that's a really, right now in general, we're at a very sensitive time in our nation in America, but also globally, where we are starting to realize that a lot of us have racist tendencies, whether it's through microaggressions or overt racist acts or covert racist acts. And I think that 
what was shown on the show was a form of a microaggression. It's making this joke. We're the butt of a joke. Our entire nation is the butt of a joke. Um, they made fun of the uniforms that they had on in the show, which is that it was they were wearing our flag. So they made fun of the, the country itself, the flag. And I think um, I saw that somebody had put up a petition um, on change.org. Let me see who it was. I had put it in front of me. So um, Sydney, Sydney had put up um, a petition if anyone wants to sign that, just kind of asking to stand up for misrepresentation of our country. Um, but I've seen that a lot of people actually want it removed from Netflix. So if I had to say like, who is this larger umbrella of who's to blame? Um, I don't know that there's one person to blame, but I think that I was very disappointed in Netflix. I talked about it and what I put out on um, Instagram, but I've always been a huge supporter of Netflix. I love Netflix. Um, I talked about how showing my age, when I was in college, we were those people who would like send in the DVDs to get the new DVDs because Netflix used to be like, you had to mail in the, the DVDs. And so um, I've always been really proud of the content they put out. It's very progressive. Like they have Immigration Nation that's, that's just coming out. Um, they have a lot of different, they use their platform for a lot of progressive media. And this was not progressive at all. It was very regressive and oppressive. So I was very, yeah, I think if I had to blame a larger entity, I would definitely say Netflix, um, because I think that, you know, they're responsible for the content that they put out on their platform. Yeah, let's get back to uh, change.org, that petition that came out. Um... You know, it, it was really surprising to me to, to go on there and to see the, the people who are, are, are signing to this petition. And, you know, you would think that in, in the show, they were talking about the four stars in Micronesia to be just the Federated States of Micronesia. And, and, and there are some comments, uh, you know, K, we put out a poll here at KUAM. And, you know, some people were kind of going tw towards this, um, this whole thing where, oh, well, it's, it's only the FSM. Like, it's and like it's not it, it doesn't affect us and i think when you go onto the petition you see the people who are um who are signing this petition that this ranges from all the islands from palau to guam to all the way to the marshall islands every single islander is stepping up for micronesia for the fsm and i think that really goes to show how how bonded we are when it comes to something like issues like this, when, when you're talking about the islands and, and especially when you put on a shirt, Micronesia. Now, if you were to just single out a country, you should have said Federated States of Micronesia. That's mm -hmm. one country. But when you put Micronesia on your shirt, you're, you're pretty much dealing with six different countries. I think that um, I'm very happy to see the representation from the different islands and I've seen um, you know a lot of us are we're Micronesian American we we're born and raised here in the United States but we know our roots right we know that our family came from the Federated States of Micronesia or Palau or you know even though we're American we know that this is where we're from and and so we're really uniting as a people even though you know people say a lot of the time like oh you're separated by the ocean I've heard someone say no we're connected by the ocean and so I think that even though um, we're from these different places and we're living in all of these places around the world. I think that we still know what our roots are and we know who our people are. And I'm, I'm really proud to see how we've all come together to say that this is not right. Um, I do think what I could say is that the episode and the writers were making this show and thinking that this was hilarious or, you know, that the content was funny. Um, without having ill will. I don't think that they had any intention of trying to hurt an entire population of people. But I think that's the issue, right? Because as Micronesians, we're often um, overlooked. It's, we're marginalized. We easily fall through mar margins because people don't take us into consideration. That's how we've <laughs> historically gotten taken out of receiving a lot of our benefits in the United States, like Medicaid, and SNAP benefits and things like that, because people forgot about us. We were literally just forgotten when policies were made and legislation was written. Um, and so I don't think that they thought about us and who we are and what our country is and what we represent. I see a lot of people writing online, you know, we're not a terrible country, we're a paradise. I agree. But 
nobody who's Micronesian was at that table who was writing this episode. And maybe they didn't mean anything by it in terms of trying to be ill-willed, but um, I have a friend who always uses this comparison. It's kind of like, you know, just because you don't mean to hurt someone doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you get away with it all the time. You know, if, if I'm walking and I accidentally step on your foot um, and it hurts you, it doesn't mean that it's okay that I did it just because I didn't mean to do it. It's still, I still need to acknowledge that I hurt you and try to make that right. Because just because I didn't mean to hurt you doesn't mean that it didn't happen. And so I think the appropriate thing is I've seen a lot of people have a lot of call of actions. I don't, like I said, I don't think there was ill and ill intent behind it, but I think that as a people, we need to A, recognize that this is not okay. We need to stand up and say it's not okay, which I'm really proud of the way that our communities reacted because that's exactly what we're doing. We're standing up and saying, this is not acceptable. Um, people are putting out petitions. That's awesome. So Sydney's doing a great job of heading up something where people are saying, you know, sign on to this if you agree. And I think in addition to that, um, we need to have some type of call of action. So I've seen some people say that I'm not a huge fan of cancel culture because I think that, you know, we should always try to give people a chance to grow. But I've seen people say that they want to call for the episode to be taken off the air. So maybe not cancel the, cancel the episode or cancel, you know, the big show show or cancel um, or the network or, you know, things like that. Sorry, I got a little mixed up. But yeah, but maybe not cancel everything. But I think that it's very appropriate just like with all the bigger things that are going on in our nation, um, you know, with getting rid of names like the Redskins or the name of Aunt Jemima, I think it's very appropriate for them to say, we're taking this off the air. It's not appropriate. It is very demeaning to an entire group of people across the ocean. And I think that that would be extremely appropriate for them to take it off, off of the platform, that episode anyways. If, if, it's, if we're gonna move forward, and we want to get because what we want is representation that's what we wanted in the first place we wanted a uh, representation at first because we saw the t-shirts we're like we were so hyped because we thought we we're going to be like wow we're, we're going to be you know fsm is going to be in, in, like mentioned at least not once or twice but at least 10 times in a show you know so so what i'm saying is how about when moving on write a new episode this time kind of you know fix your wrongs in this one yeah, and I like what you're saying about having representation, because I think the best place to start when you're quote unquote representing someone is to have their voice at the table. And so I talked about this, and I don't even know if I did, if I was articulate in the way of what I was trying to say, is that that's what we're asking for. We're asking for appropriate representation. And you can't really represent us if you don't have us at the table to speak for ourselves. You can't speak on our behalf. And so when I was talking a lot about colonization, that's what I was saying is that, you know, we come from a people where a lot of our history is passed down from generation to generation through oral presentation. And so when you take away our voices or our voices is not brought to the table, it completely kind of goes back to this pattern of this bigger issue of that we're allowing people who are not a part of our community, who are often a part of our, of colonialism or our colonists community to tell our stories and represent on behalf of us and that's extremely inappropriate it's just not it's 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 not something that should ever be done you shouldn't be there to represent us when you're not a part of who we are i mean like this could have passed what 30 40 years ago but mm -hmm. at this time well like i said we've all gotten educated you can't mm -hmm. you can't fly that past us like like our radar will catch that so quick you're like whoa slow down right. guys slow down i'll see what you're doing over there i'll see yes. what you're doing slow down <laughs> so i think it's time you know that like we get islanders especially all the islands in the you know um all the islands in the you know in the in, in the micronesian region to have representation at, at things i know you know back in the day we got so hyped about um survivor survival was a big thing they came to micronesia they they shot episodes in in palau they shot um you know i think they shot episodes in palau i forgot which other micronesian island they shot shot uh they, they came to yap and they, they did some shots in yap as well so that was a big thing but that was that was what 20 years ago you know yeah. we haven't seen anything since but People were so hyped about 2020 because Netflix was just on Guam three years ago, and they shot uh, this new movie, which had Cat Graham. You, so I don't know if you've heard about this new movie that was supposed to drop this year, but because of COVID-19, they pushed the release date back. So I think to towards the end of the year. 
So people were hyped about that because they were here. They shouted. The, the, the cool thing about it was they included locals in the cast. Very cool. Okay. And the, the cool thing about it is they're talking about the, the, world's, most, the mo- world's most longest running humanitarian act, which is the, uh, the Christmas drop. Wow. I don't know if you've heard about the Christmas drop. No, tell me more about that. So the Christmas drop is uh, is a humanitarian effort that happens every Christmas day. Every Christmas, uh, organizations like uh, the Salvation Army and will will bring together gifts and food and everything, wrap it together. The military does the job of flying it out to the outer islands of uh, between Yap and Chuk, and they drop off these the they drop off these boxes with goods and gifts and. And, and, you know, food. So uh, Christmas time, this is a big thing during Christmas time in the islands. And it's been happening for more than 40 years now. So uh, this is one of the, the, this is one of the, the, the main uh, point in that movie was, uh, I think it was like a love story of this um, uh, Navy or Air Force guy who came out and did that. So it kind of shows that whole um, Christmas drop operation thing. So people were happy about that. People were looking forward to that movie drop, and then this happened. We're like, "Well, okay, what's up, Netflix? Did you, did you forget that? You, like, we were, we were hype." I know. So. Yeah, I was saying. I think that they Netflix as as a network, or I don't know if they consider themselves a network or a platform or streaming. You know, but I think I'm very impressed with a lot of the content they put out, and so um, this was really disheartening <laughs> to see you know, a little bit of regression. Um, but I think, I think that it can be, um, maybe not completely fixed what happened happened, but I think that, um, it would be really good from them to see a statement, um, apologizing or some type of recognition that maybe this was not the right move to make. And I think it would be really nice if they did, you know, continue on more that type of path where there is more representation of of some of our natives, our indigenous folks. Like, that'd be awesome to, like, the next episode they put out after this would be all, you know, kind of get into that and just show that, hey, we're sorry, but here's what, representation, you got it. You know, yeah. more of what, you know, more Micronesian, maybe see fellow Micronesians on, you know, on that show, you know, because I think when you do that, well, guess what? You really gained us back. Like I say, we're at 50 right now. But you give us that, well, we're at 100. You know, we yeah. – and I, I love you talked about that in your, your video where we, we love Netflix. We've been supporting Netflix. Like you, you've, been, you've been at Netflix since – you're like an OG of Netflix. You know? Right. You're an OG <laughs> of Netflix. Like 2007. So, yeah. I mean, no. I, would, I, I don't want to completely cancel an entire platform. I just want them to rectify the wrong. And I think – um, what comes with that is, oh, sorry, I don't know where I'm going, but go ahead. What were you going to say? <laughs> no, go for it. I'm listening. Like you were saying? Oh, I was saying, I just, I feel like rectifying a wrong, it's not always an easy thing to do. I understand that. If you apologize, if you put out a statement, not everyone's going to accept it. But I think absolutely ignoring it is a bigger issue and acting like it's not a problem at all is, is more... Um, it's more damaging than, than the latter. And so I really hope that there's some type of recognition that, you know, this was not the right route to take um, because some people are going to stop and they're going to say, oh, you know, Micronesians, they're being so sensitive or they should be, you know, there's going to be people who are on the other side of the fence who completely disagree with those of us who have these opinions. But my argument to that is that a lot of people who make those arguments is that they're, they often say, oh, well, it's not that big of a deal or it doesn't matter. And it's my, I guess my argument to that would be, if it doesn't matter, then why can't you just take it down? Or if it doesn't matter, then why, why is it not that big of a deal to just take the episode and just take, you know, throw it on the cutting board? <laughs> so I don't know. I think that there's, there's bigger concerns at heart, um, and I think I was really disappointed to see um, that, like you said, the, the representation felt like a very big misrepresentation, because I think um, the end of the episode, I, I saw the, 
that they were they were gonna get in the middle and they were gonna do like the hands of like okay on the count of three say it and they said the federated states of micronesia and then she was like oh it's never gonna work and then she said something like we better get something good next year so even at the end of the episode there wasn't like this bigger resolution of like micronesia being great it was like oh but we're still micronesia it was still like dissing on our country and i really wish that at least if you would have made these jokes in the beginning like you could have maybe had these realizations of like Micronesians, they're Pacific Islanders, they're warriors, they're navigators, they're healers. Like our ancestors have done amazing things and we are descendants of these people. We know that they're amazing people and there's so much that they could have done with this episode to put us in any type of positive light. But no, the family was brought in a positive light, but our country was continued to be dissed to the very end of the episode until the credits ran. Uh, like I said, like it's the... It like, to them, it might be nothing because they're using these little words and it's so subtle and it's in there. They're just slipping it, you know, like slipping, like sliding it into those, into the script, like it won't matter, but it really does. And like I said, we're, we're so educated now that we're catching these little things that they're saying. Like you said, you watch all the way to the end thinking that they will kind of come out and be like, no, you know what? I can use you as an awesome place. But guess what? They kind of just it towards the end and you're like, what? Like, come on you know yeah so, so i think i think it really goes back to um to them actually realizing that no we're not just a group of islands and no we're not living in the the in the the 70s we have internet now we have our, our kids are going off to colleges and graduating with bas and, and and masters and and things like that like we're we're a step up like we're right right not we're right next to them if anything you know like so mm. don't try to throw these little things into shows that kind of dislike little countries and, and somebody else said this in one of the comments they were saying like you know what and they've been doing this the kind of uh putting down countries and that's what they've been it, it's part of this whole uh, colonial idea of that's how you suppress, mm -hmm. that's how you suppress, mm -hmm. you know, um, you, the colonies that you, you look after, like you kind of put them down. So that way they don't rise up against you. And this is one of the yeah. ways to do it. And it's, and somebody was saying like, it's so sad to see that it's still in writing today. It's still shown in movies and that, that, that 2020 should have been a year where people were like, you know what? It's time to put those into, put those bad ways away, you know? Yeah. And in the episode, the, the rival team was the American team and they were like, oh, they always get to be America. It was like perceived as like this great country and I'm an American. So, I mean, I'm not hating on America by any means, but what I'm saying is that America is the last place that colonized the Federated States of Micronesia. So it really is like, even it feels like salt in the wound even to say like, oh, we got some terrible country, Micronesia, but they get to be the all great America. It's, it really does, it feels like salt in the wound. Um, the, it, was, it was not, it was very distasteful. The entire episode was very distasteful. So um, at the rate we're going now with the petition that's out there, like I hope a lot of people go in and sign that. I know a lot of people are, are waking up today to, to go sign that online. So I hope at the rate that we're going, petition being signed, that Netflix will finally uh, see what they've done and kind of put out a statement. Yeah. So I think for me, um, as a community member, I have three calls of action. So if there's anyone listening to this, I think I have like a, a three-tier – like what I would ask of the people. So I think first and foremost, my first call of action would be a call of action to Netflix or to the Big Show Show, um, the writers, the actors, anybody who feels like they had responsibility in the production of that episode. And that would be for statements, statements of recognizing that this was distasteful, that it was pretty disrespectful and that it wasn't, it was in poor taste. Yeah, I said distasteful, but yes, that it was not maybe the best idea. So some type of statement, that would be my first call of action. My second call of action would be for, like I said, we're often silenced as people and using our voices. That's like historically what we're good at. That's what our ancestors did. And I think as descendants, that's what we need to do. So I would say, you know, my call of action to all of us in the community, the, the Micronesian community, the Pacifica community um, is to continue to use your voices. Do not be silenced. You're doing awesome. I'm proud of all of you. You're my people. Keep it up. And then my third call of action would be to our allies. So I think a lot of the time, um, you know, if it's just us fighting this fight, 
than Netflix and the Big Show Show and all these people, it's going to be considered a very like us versus them type of situation. And I think that's where it gets tricky. We need people who see this to not be silenced as well. They need to use their voices as well. And they need to say that this is not okay. Because um, silence is compliance, right? So if you're not seeing this, and I think I have a friend who signed the petition and she's American and she's white, my friend Liz. And, you know, I think that it's important for them to see, oh, this isn't just a group of brown people being super sensitive. There are people who look like us who also think that this is absolutely inappropriate. We need our allies to speak up on our behalf too, because they might not, you know, these writers and whatnot, they might not listen to people who look like us and sound like us, but they might listen to you because you look like them and you sound like them. And it's different when it's coming from someone in your own community. So that would be my third call of action is for our allies to step up, up on our behalf as well and kind of join us in this, in this, in rectifying what's going on. Everybody who's listening and watching, you know, do your part, you know, uh, get educated. I think the key here is to get educated. You know, it's, we're not living in the, four, we're not living, you know, we're, we're not in, you know, 40 years ago, we're, we're way up in the front. and It's 2020. It's time to get educated. Uh, tr try to know uh, and to, to do what's right. I think that's what um, the call of actions is pretty much um, putting out here. So, again, Angela, thank you so much for your time. Can uh, I do a shameless plug? Uh, yeah, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So, I am Angela. I am also a creator and a host of a podcast myself. So, I host For Micronesians by Micronesians. You can find it wherever you find podcasts. And um, if you love what Victorious is doing, which I think is awesome, um, you might, this might kind of be in the same thing. It's almost like, oh, you know, if, if you like this, you might like this. So I also, um, my goal is to, um, it's a lot of Micronesian Americans. I do some people who are outside of America as well, but um, I try to highlight dynamic Micronesians um, on each ep episode that's put out. So um, feel free to take a listen to that too. If you, if you really like Victorious, maybe that might be something else that you might enjoy as well. Oh, trust me, they're gonna love your podcast. I've been, I listen to Thank all of them, you. and it's always it's it's always a good time listening to your podcast. Again, so go ahead and drop your um, drop where can people go follow you? Where where people go follow your your podcast and stuff like that? Yep. So um, if I was gonna put out like a what you should follow, definitely go to Instagram. That's where I put out most of the content content for the for the podcast. And so I also make some content that's just kind of related to things that impact our community, like mental health in the Micronesian community, um, suicide in the mental community, or, or suicide in the Micronesian community, um, how to be an ally to the Micronesian community. So different types of content, but that is on Instagram for Micronesians by Micronesians, all one word. There you go. So there you have it. The amazing, the awesome Angela Edward, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Angela, for taking time. I know it's, it's the time difference is kind of getting us, but thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for having me. I appreciate your time. All right, guys. Thank you. Well, that pretty much wraps up another episode of It's the One of My Podcast. I will catch you at the next one. And you guys have a safe and awesome one.